G'day. In this video we're having a look at my turret again. It's not on centre so we're adjusting the height of the turret. But there's also some photos from a previous uh, strip down and repair that I thought you might be interested in. This is the lathe with the computer sitting beside it. There's a card in the computer that actually runs the lathe along with the software. You can see the tool is not at the right height. There's the uh, picture of the turret itself. Here we're taking the screws out to take the motor cover off. And there's the motor and its little gearbox housed in a nylon casing. All we're doing here is just taking it off and adjusting the height. There's shims underneath it. Uh, there's three there. The the turret is held in place by nesting between that piece of raised cast iron and a single dowel and it works very well. To start off with we removed all the shims bar the black one and that's what happened. So we added another shim and we ended up with this result. There's a nib on there but I need glasses and I didn't take the tool in far enough. But you can't do that if your tool's not on centre, so I was pretty happy with that. And you can see there that parted that piece off with no dramas. So I was happy with where it was. Now we'll have a look at the bits and pieces inside the actual turret. That white wire there is quite important. It tells the software that the tool has arrived and is in position. That's the motor plate removed you can see the gear that the motor drives there's the plate with the contact plate in it off to the right at the end of the arrow and you can see the shot pins which actually hold the turret in place while it's working there's the hardened plate that the shot pins locate in and you can see there's a brass plate at the other side of that and you can see the contact marks where the shot pins actually contact the brass plate. The black things you can see are little bits of insulation uh, to stop the brass plate contacting the cast iron of the housing. And you can see on the right there's a silver looking mark where the solder is for the white wire that goes in there. Those tiny bits of swarf you can see up there on the photo um, if they build up enough they actually create a contact between the casting and the brass and uh, stops the thing working so I made up a new insulator to go in place of the rather deteriorating old black bits that white wire again that the end that you can't see that's blurred towards you is actually attached to that brass contact plate I took these photos just for my own use, not to explain to anybody else how the thing worked. Now the disc is back in place inside the insulator I made and you can see up at about 12 o'clock there's the solder again where the white wire is attached to the contact disc. This is a look at the drum that actually the casting that actually holds the drum that holds the tools you can see there's two micro switches there they contact scalloped cutouts in the drum uh, one of them has eight cutouts and one has one so that's so one finds tool one and one finds all the other tools there's the shot pin carrier inside the drum and here's a shot of the shot pin carrier itself. You see there's quite a um, steep thread on that steel shaft. That's what enables the shot pins to be moved out of the plate that they sit in, the drum to revolve, and then they drop back into the plate to make contact with that brass ring. So there's the shot pins again and the cover going back over and you can see the white wire again it's quite important that white wire it carries vital messages 
Now this is just a random program that I changed the numbers of the tools. None of the movements make any sense. It was just to make sure that the tools were going round and finding their right position after we reassembled it. I mean, it should have been okay, but uh, you never know with these things. Pays to check. So it's managing to find tool one and tool five repeatedly. So that's all about all I need. And thank you for watching.